<laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Well, tonight's the big debate night for the Dems. So, will Joe Biden be there? And even though he hasn't secured the nomination, Donald Trump is already saying who he likes for his VP. We will tell you. And a 12-year-old boy being sued by his own aunt because he jumped into her arms at his birthday party. Hi, everyone. I'm Gretchen Carlson. The real story starts right now. Five Democrats gambling their future on a high-stakes debate in Las Vegas, rolling the dice as they face off for the first time on the same stage in the Casino Strip in Vegas. But the one Dem who seems to have the best odds of beating the Republicans, he won't be on the stage. VP Joe Biden still not running. Ed Henry, live for us in Vegas. So, Ed, when Hillary Clinton landed there, she immediately went after the Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. What is that strategy about? Well, it's uh, very interesting, Gretch. You're right. She should be coming here, obviously, to get ready to come up with a contrast with Bernie Sanders, who's beating her in some of the state polls in New Hampshire, for example. But she immediately went to the Trump Hotel right across from the Wynn, Las Vegas, where the debate will be, uh, to join forces with some culinary workers who are protesting Donald Trump's policies, his statements. Uh, she jumped right in because she's trying to get labor support. She's struggling to get their endorsements. And she immediately tried to show, I'm the front runner. I'm the likely Democrat. Democratic nominee, so I'm going after the Republican frontrunner. Listen. Some people think Mr. Trump is entertaining, but I don't think it's entertaining when somebody insults immigrants, insults women. That is just unacceptable behavior. And so when we're here together in solidarity to organize, we also want to send a message to Mr. Trump that if you are going to run for president, then you should represent all the people of the United States. Except we have a Fox poll that's hot off the presses, and it shows if Hillary Clinton was matched up with Donald Trump in a general election, she would lose badly by double digits. Look at some of the numbers there. Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, they would all beat her in a general election, but our poll shows that Vice President Joe Biden would actually beat many of these Republicans. He's still not in. The White House just told us a moment ago that he is at the White House right now, so he is not on a plane headed to Vegas, even though there's a, there's a sixth podium waiting if he changes his mind in the next few moments. Yeah, unbelievable. Let's see. He still has a couple minutes. He could still make it, Ed. So we're going to keep a close watch on that. Now, take us behind the scenes in Vegas. Well, it's interesting. You know, it's sort of like old home week for the Clinton folks that bumped into James Carville, the raging Cajun. Former President Bill Clinton is here. Uh, you know, the former president, I'm told, is not going to be in the room tonight for the debate. Uh, one Democratic official was telling me that they didn't want him on TV. Every reaction, whether he laughed or didn't laugh at a Hillary joke or if he grimaced when somebody attacked her, everybody would be dissecting that. So he's going to be at a debate watch party instead, I'm told. Carville's been snapping photos with Torres, but told me on the side lines that he's been advising Hillary Clinton and they've got he's gotten back together with the Clinton camp uh, to give her some debate strategy. Uh, Cheryl Crow, by the way, is going to be giving delivering the national anthem tonight right before the candidates have their opening statement. So uh, they're going to have a little fun and then they're going to get down to business, Gretch. Very interesting about the former president because it's all about optics. Ed, thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about another candidate, Bernie Sanders, getting energy from the liberal left as he challenges Hillary Clinton. But a recent exchange with him on the Sunday news shows may not play well with the rest of the American voting public. Listen to this. Look, when one of your Republican colleagues gets on the show, mm -hmm. do you say, are you a capitalist? Have you ever referred to them as capitalists? Yeah. Are you a capitalist? No. I'm a democratic socialist. Joining me now, Joe Lieberman, former Connecticut senator and the co-chair of No Labels, the bipartisan group that hosted Bernie Sanders, as well as other presidential candidates over the last few days. Senator, great to have you back on The Real Story. Great to be back with you, Gretchen. Thank so, you. it's very interesting to look at this matchup now with Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. And one of the things that's been fascinating to me is that so many people would actually vote for a socialist. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, fascinating for me, too. I mean, certainly 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, if a candidate in the Democratic primaries, let alone the Republican, said that he was a socialist, 
Uh, that would have been the end of the campaign, but uh, not so anymore. And I think part of that is because the Democratic Party has moved somewhat left. But part of it is that uh, Bernie Sanders has redefined what it means to be socialist. In it's, what way? Well, I think in, uh, when I was growing up, socialist was like right next door to being a communist, right. and the communists were our enemies. I think uh, today Bernie's uh, defined a democratic socialist, which he adds to it, uh, in some ways uh, just as sort of the more liberal part of the Democratic Party, well, that, and a little bit like the parties in Europe. It's a, it's a remarkable change. Yeah, and I'm not sure it's good or bad, but check out this latest poll. Ed was talking about some polls. This was an interesting question. Would you vote for a presidential candidate who was dot, 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 a woman, 92% say yes, black, 92%, gay, 74%, atheist, 58%, but then look at socialist on this poll, yeah. Senator. Uh, it has higher negatives, at right. least on this poll. Yeah, that's a stunning reaction. Uh, it, it, it only surprises me in relationship to the other factors that were mentioned. So, look, I don't think Bernie Sanders is going to be nominated by the Democratic Party. But honestly, who knows? Who knows? But if he, if he is nominated, uh, he's going to have to overcome uh, that, that self-description as a socialist. Yeah, and all the policies that come with it. Exactly. So let me ask you this. You endorsed John McCain in 2008. Right. You crossed the aisle. You became an independent in Connecticut and won as senator. In 2012, you chose not to endorse anybody. Who are you endorsing in 2016? <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm really focusing. I may, I may in the end, when the both parties nominate their choices, but right now I'm focusing on the group called No Labels, along with John Huntsman, former Republican governor, of Utah and the basic idea we had a big convention big success in Manchester New Hampshire yesterday eight presidential candidates from Trump to Sanders spoke to us and basically we're trying to say when this is all over folks please get together and work with each other in Washington to <laughs> get something that. done it, it's a very quaint and idealistic yes. idea but the country suffers because uh, they're not doing it now agreed okay Turning now to the GOP, Donald Trump also spoke at this No Labels event in New Hampshire where he took questions from a woman who it turns out works for Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte and also volunteers for the Jeb Bush campaign. Hmm. I don't think that you're a friend to woman. How, what, it... I knew I shouldn't have picked her. Will a woman make the same as a man and do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. You're going to make the same if you do as good a job, and I happen to be pro-life. All right, so the Jeb Bush campaign, they put out a statement now. Like many in New Hampshire, Lauren is a student at St. A's who's passionate about and active in politics and attended this event on her own accord. While this question was not sanctioned by the campaign, we can't help but notice Mr. Trump does seem to be very sensitive about being challenged by women. Uh-oh, Senator Lieberman. I mean, now, it wasn't necessarily a plant from the Jeb Bush campaign, right. but now they're going head-to-head -head on this. I mean, are we going to start seeing more of this as the competition grows more intense? Oh, for sure. It's going to happen. You'll see it tonight on the stage in the Democratic primary, but you're definitely going to see it in the Republican contest. You already do because there's so many candidates, and they can't all survive, so they've got to distinguish themselves. I thought it was maybe an awkward moment yesterday in Manchester, but I thought, uh, you know, we don't screen people when they come in. Right. This is not a liberal or conservative group. I, none of us knew who she was. I certainly didn't know. But I thought Donald Trump handled it directly and then moved on. <laughs> he handles most <laughs> things pretty directly. It's one of the reasons people like him. All right, Senator, great to have you back. Thank great you. Great to be with you.